Are you brand new to heirloom sewing and wondering what fabrics you should buy? Then this video is for you. Your hair. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Sarah. I've been doing heirloom sewing for about 10 years now and in this video I'm going to be going over the top five beginner friendly fabrics for heirloom sewing. So first and foremost, I, lo I love Imperial Batiste. Sweet Daisy here is wearing a dress and the skirt of it I know it's not technically heirloom by some definitions of heirloom, but it's um, the skirt of it is Imperial Batiste, and I absolutely love this fabric. It is super affordable. It's about six fifty seven dollars a yard for sixty inch wide. Would you like to draw? And it's a cotton polyester blend. So that's why it's not technically heirloom by some definitions of heirloom because. The hoity-toity definition of heirloom mean, you know, requires everything to be 100% natural fibers, so the polyester being in there throws that off. But the polyester is a great thing if you do not like ironing, okay? Because the polyester is going to resist irons for you. So especially when you're making garments with, for little ones, you don't have to worry about them getting so bunched up. And Imperial Batiste, you can smock it, you can do hand embroidery on it. It does it does so many things so well. The only thing that comes to mind that you probably should stay away from are things like hem stitching and pin stitching, like with the little dot, you know? I would not recommend doing that on any sort of uh, Imperial fabric, anything with polyester in it. But otherwise, it's a beautiful fabric, great bang for your buck, a ton of different colors, and I use it all the time. Even not a beginner anymore, I still, I love this fabric. So, the next one is Satin Batiste, and this is going to be, yes, we love Satin Batiste. Has a beautiful sheen to it. Oh, it's just absolutely exquisite. And it smocks up great, does hand embroidery great. Yeah, and it is an heirloom quality fabric. It's 100% cotton. Just a wonderful, all around good fabric. Next up on the list is Gingham. Gingham is a classic print. Yeah, and you can have a silk gingham or a cotton gingham or whatever. I would recommend staying with the cotton gingham as a beginner. It, um, can I help you? And not only is gingham a classic print, but also the benefit of that print is that if you do not have a smocking pleater and likely you don't being a beginner in this world, gingham, you can kind of get around that and just use gingham like a quarter inch spaced mm or you can use 3 8 of an inch spacing and use the grid that Gingham provides you to pleat by hand. I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to pleating at Gingham and I think that Gingham should only be pleated by hand. Of course, it's sewing, you do you. But that's just my two cents on the matter. And you can pleat it by hand. It does not take as long as you would think. You just kind of sit there in front of a uh, in front of a TV or whatever, vegging out, and before you know it, you have your project all pleated up. <laughs> yeah. Another great classic in the heirloom world is dotted Swiss. Love me some dotted Swiss. Now the heirloom 100% cotton flavor of it is an arm and a leg, and as a beginner you are likely not going to want to purchase that and I can't blame you. Now it's absolutely gorgeous and it's it's worth one day you'll get there and you'll you'll see that it's worth it. But for now that you're just starting out, I'd recommend doing the cotton polyester version because it's a lot more affordable. And again, you can use those dots. I've seen it where you use those dotted Swiss, like the dots on dotted Swiss, the little fuzzies, mm. to pleat up your fabric. And so you can get around not having a smocking pleater and use dotted Swiss. And I just, I adore dotted Swiss even to this day. I love the, why well, I, I, I drool over the heirloom quality, 100% cotton flavor, but I also still use the cotton polyester flavor. It is plenty pretty, and I'm using it this year for Easter, so. Last but not least is a voil. Voil is a yummy, yummy goodness, super lightweight fabric. You will have to line it or have a slip, one of the two. Um, and it does smock up just fine. Like you can put it through a pleater. I've done it through a pleater without interfacing. And then those pleats, 
they don't quite collapse, but they have a very delicate, fragile look to them. Um, of course, you can put some interfacing behind them and then it will plump up those plates some more. But yeah, Voil is, I think, beginner friendly, a cotton Voil, because it's easy to sew with and it's heirloom quality and it's just gorgeous. I even have a dress where I didn't even hem the thing because the selvage edge was so pretty. I thought I just let the selvage edge be the hem of the dress. So you're not even having to hem. How beginner friendly is that? <laughs> now one word of caution is to stay away from silk as a beginner. Two reasons. One, just about every silk weave under the sun, it sheds on you. So before you know it, I love me some silk, but before you know it, you've just are, you've got these little threads all over you. And then other flavors of weave like charmeuse and um, what's another, satin, silk satin, they will just slip slide on you all over the place. And so as a beginner, I think it's best to like, you know, get a, get a good grasp for how to handle fabric and how to sew and get all your seam allowances even up and all of those boxes checked off first and then venture out to things that are going to slip slide on you. So you don't want to be learning everything all at one time. It's a bit overwhelming. Do you need to iron? We apparently need to iron. So we have other videos in this heirloom beginner series. Go check them out. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, of course, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time. Say bye. Say bye. Mwah! <laughs>